Hey there, I'm Brian Grant with Diesel Review, an automotive journalist and an Audi A6 TDI owner. There it is. And today I want to talk about what has occurred with the V6 diesels, because we don't really know much. On today, November 3rd, Judge Breyer met with Volkswagen and basically set another court date. So it was a continuance, essentially. And the continuance was based on what we're going to do with these three liter diesels. Now, I own one and I have done a lot of research on it. Even though there's a sealed case with the U.S. District Court in Northern California on this three liter diesel, I've actually read some German news articles translated through Google that explain a little bit more about what VW did with these Audi and Porsche diesels in the U.S. And I'm going to go over those issues right now. The first one is AdBlue. Now, the AdBlue tank is filled from right here, okay? Now, clearly, the tank is somewhere near the rear axle of the vehicle. I don't know where it is exactly, but I do know it's somewhere between two and two and a half gallons. The problem is they didn't put a large enough tank in this vehicle to accommodate the exhaust output of this three liter diesel. So instead of creating a larger tank, they kept the tank the same size. And with this tank this size, they didn't want to increase the dealer visits between service to get a refill of the AdBlue tank. So what do they do? They reduce the dosage of AdBlue during normal operation. It's only during testing cycles that the dosage of AdBlue was amped up to what it should be. So that's the first problem. And to fix that, you either have to increase the size of the AdBlue tank and increase the dosage, or you basically have to, well, no, that's your only fix. And obviously they're not gonna be able to squeeze in a larger AdBlue tank in there. So it means you have to have more dosage to reduce NOx, but at the same time, owners will have to visit the dealership way more often than they normally do to get an AdBlue refill. AdBlue is relatively cheap. It's like 14 bucks from the dealer, but Audi covers it between services, so it's not an issue at all. However, the other issue is Porsche claimed back in the summer that they have a fix for the three liter diesel Cayenne, and that includes a larger catalytic converter. Well, in this A6 model, it's not possible. And that's because the catalytic converter, the diesel particulate filter, and the selective catalytic reduction system are all one unit. And that unit is actually back in here. If I pull this cover off, we see this unit here. Okay, so I can't even get two fingers in this gap between the firewall, which is heat protected, and the SCR DPF catalytic converter unit. And if you look here, it's actually right next to the turbo. So I don't see how they're going to get a larger system in place. Maybe they can engineer it longer and get it working underneath the vehicle further. But if that's the case, how can they replace it without taking out the engine? As an owner, I certainly don't want them to have my car re drop the engine, replace all these parts, and put it back. I don't think it's going to be the same car when I get it back. Furthermore, how can 450 dealers handle 85,000 repairs in a timely manner? I don't see it being possible, especially when you have to drop the engine. It could take a month just for one owner to get their car back. So that aside, let's get into the next issue, and it's been quite an interesting one. So the EPA says that there's some undocumented software or an undocumented electronic happenings going on with this engine. And that is because Audi has this thing called the acoustic function. And it actually existed in the 09 and 2010 Volkswagen TDI models as well. Basically, it has piezo injectors, and they inject five times per combustion cycle. And there's a pre-injection that basically creates less noise when the engine is running. So that's not documented. And in order to fix that, I guess with software they can turn it off. But how is this engine going to run with less fuel thrown into the cylinder? There will probably be less power output and more noise. 
So in that case, maybe they have to add larger injectors and reduce the amount of injections to the required cycle for combustion. Well, in this case, that's going to require more programming for throttle mapping. And that's going to change the driving dynamics completely of the vehicle. So given all that information between the AdBlue and the Audi acoustic function and the parts required to fix that, I haven't even gotten into the temperature conditioning function, which was the original way the EPA caught Volkswagen on these V6 TDIs, basically saying that uh, it'll idle and then for two seconds past that standard test procedure, it deviates back to some other mode. And that's basically the cheat. But digging deep down and reading all the German news articles from the non-sealed cases, this is what's going on for V6 TDI owners. In my opinion, and as an owner, I would basically just take a buyback. I don't see a way it can be fixed, and I don't see a way it's going to run the way it was ever meant to run. And that brings me on another subject, because I've been looking at replacement cars already, not just for this vehicle, but for 2.0 TDI owners. And on Reddit, I stumbled upon something the other day that was very interesting. And that is if you go to fueleconomy.gov, about five days ago, someone noticed they pulled all the fuel economy stats for TDI models. Not just the four cylinder models, but this one too. So that tells me I can't even pull up fuel stats or CO2 emission stats or anything on the government website, meaning that they've just literally pulled them off the road. So keep that in mind and stay tuned to Diesel Review because I have articles, I'm linking to everything on the German websites with the Google translations, and I'll be having more videos soon on Diesel Review YouTube. So stay subscribed. And if you're not interested in diesel cars anymore, I have another channel called New Car Spin. So be sure to check out New Car Spin on YouTube, subscribe to that, and I'll get you more information, more videos, more reviews as time goes by. But at this moment, I can't wait for the buyback. Thanks for watching.